before we discuss the structure of an atom, we're going to look at the definition of an element versus a compound and how that relates specifically to an atom. And I'll be looking at the periodic table. So every block on the periodic table constitutes an atom. For example, an atom of hydrogen uh, is represented by the symbol H. And the element hydrogen just happens to occur in twos. So this would be the element hydrogen on your blue sheet that has common symbols and names on the bottom of the blue sheet, you'll see an explanation of this. So there are a few elements that occur in twos. And we're going to see that hydrogen is one of them. And then these elements that make the letter seven also occur in twos. Most of us know that oxygen is O2. Okay. Again, we see an explanation of that on the bottom of the blue sheet, and um, this is going to be important when we're naming, and so we'll see this several times. Okay. So what constitutes an element is it's matter that's comprised of only one type of atom, and most of the elements do occur as just a single atom. So carbon, the element carbon is C, the element helium is HE, or the element iron is FE. A few of the elements occur in twos. So that's the seven that I just made on the periodic table, and there's an explanation of it here. In your textbook, you can see the table on page 134. And figure 5-9 is the periodic table, and we see that 7 that I drew um, that illustrates that. Okay. So a compound is two or more different types of atoms. So we know this is water, this is carbon dioxide, this is carbon monoxide. So the, not all elements occur as atoms. And so an atom is not necessarily an element, and an element is not necessarily an atom. Most of the time that is the case, except for these few elements that always occur in twos. Okay. Once we start looking uh, at the, an atom in general, I'm going to be looking at the periodic table, and we're going to be looking at a a couple of numbers here. So for example, carbon, we're going to see the six written above carbon. That is the atom's identity, or we call that the atomic number. And the atomic number is always equal to the number of protons. So before we get into that very specifically, uh, we're going to discuss how an atom is put together, and generally an atom has protons, neutrons, and electrons. So we'll see that any time we take a quiz or a test, we're always going to have this periodic table. So we're always going to know what an atom's atomic number is, and that's always going to be on the table. 